Kathleen Hawkins, your proud president and founder of WOMTech. I am so excited to share with you another fantastic edition of WOMTech Live. We've got some amazing guests here today that are going to educate you and hopefully help you rebuild um, your life, rebuild your home, rebuild America, and, and continue to make a difference as we all um, merge out of the recession and the changes in the home building industry that we've experienced in the last five to 10 years almost even. But before we do that, I just wanna thank all of you that were involved in the past Confident Women Conference, April 18th and 19th at the Rosen Plaza. I had so much fun. We met amazing people. Our speakers were fantastic. Don Peachy, you made me cry. It was it was incredible. It was a great, great program. And for those of you that missed it, uh, mark your calendar now. Our next event is going to be October 4th and 5th at the Rosen Plaza again. And um, we're gonna rev up your business with WOMTech at that event. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We've already secured our speakers and we will be um, purchasing tickets or tickets will be available for purchase shortly in the next couple of days. And it's just gonna be amazing. Now, if you noticed, October 4th and 5th is actually a Friday and a Saturday this time. So we're shaking it up a little bit, making a little bit of difference, making room for all of our Texans to come to WOMTEC and visit us and um, have a good time. So mark your calendar, schedule your flight. If you're a director and you're watching online, we will have a pre-director VIP party the night before, Thursday night. The um, conference, main stage conference will be on the 4th and then on the 5th we will have some fantastic breakout session speakers. The last classes that we had, um, the attendance wasn't as huge for the breakout session, but everybody that attended said it was well worth their investment and they were, um, they learned a lot. I learned a lot from several of the speakers and it will really make a difference to keep you growing your business. You know, with WOMTEC, it's our goal to empower women, build businesses and strengthen communities nationwide. And we thank everybody that, that plays a role in that from our ambassadors to our directors, to our volunteers and to our members. Um, thank you for continuing to make a difference across the nation. Now, speaking about going across the nation, the next guest I'm going to introduce you to actually was smart enough and wise enough to not only visit chapters throughout her state, but she was smart enough to take advantage of a couple of um, travel days to meet people in a different state to market and grow her business. And that's using WOMTEC to the, to the next level. So now would you please welcome to the set um, the fabulous D2E, dear friend, charter member of WOMTEC. She's been a member since day one, and um, I'm so blessed to have her support. You may recognize her face because she has been on the back cover of Confident Woman Magazine for gosh several years now right it's probably about three and a half years three and a half years and we're blessed to have that contribution and Kiki did tell me the other day she's so excited about her magazine she said I'm gonna keep the front page you can tell Dee she can keep the back cover but the front page is mine from now on so Dee thank you so much for being here today well thank you for having me here it's, I'm excited it's my pleasure well tell everybody a little bit about who you are and what you do for a living tell okay. everybody you know who you are I'm Dee Tui I'm the broker owner of innovative realty solutions group we're a local mom-and-pop real estate company here in Orlando. We are celebrating our fifth year. We're coming to a close of our fifth year uh, in July of this year. We help people buy and sell and rent real estate throughout the Central Florida and Florida community. Okay, now I know that you work with people across the nation. Tell everybody a little bit about your trip to Texas and what was your marketing strategy for why you made that trip? Well, I've worked with a lot of the girls on, you know, by chatting with them on Facebook or talking to them on the phone. I actually got a referral from one of our WOMTEC members in Texas, and we decided to take a trip down because Texas is on fire. Those chapters are huge, and those girls and guys are so exciting to be around. So I just wanted to take the opportunity and go down and network with them personally and meet with them, talk to them, explain how I can work with them, and find out how they can help me. And it was a lot of fun. Uh, made some really nice friendships out of it, met some people that I didn't know prior to going down there. So it was really a worthwhile trip. And how have you, you've been a member for five years, how have you benefited from being a charter member of WOMTEC? What, has, what does WOMTEC mean to you? WOMTEC has been amazing to me. I have made so many unique friends. I have partnered with so many different people. Uh, just the connections and you know, like last year when I was ill and in the hospital, so many WOMTEC members got on and played words with friends with me or chatted with me on Facebook, which kept me heavily amused. Just getting to know people. And that's so important in my business because I sell a product, real estate. You don't buy that every single day. So you really want to get to know the person that you're dealing with, with as a real estate professional. And a good way to do that is to just connect with people. And so WOMTEC has enabled me to do that. And uh, I've met some just terrific folks over the years. And I'm just thrilled with WOMTEC and what it has helped me do with my business. That's awesome. Thank you. And I didn't pay you to say that, did I? No, you did not pay me to say that. 
say that. I didn't even tell you I was going to ask that. You did not true. even tell me you were going to ask and that. And I know you are the one that started our WOMTEC Real Estate Facebook page before yes. I thought of the idea. You approached me and said, is it okay? Can I do this? And, mm -hmm. and I love the idea. Most, a lot of realtors would view a realtor at a meeting, you know, as stepping on their territory if they're the realtor that holds that chapter. How, why do you not view other realtors as competitors? There are a lot of real estate professionals throughout the nation. Everybody buys and sells property in Florida or knows somebody that buys and sells property in Florida. I don't look at them as a competition, but as a partner. And so for me, the WOMTEC real estate professional page is for realtors only that are a member of WOMTEC. And it's a place for us to share ideas about our markets. And what I find really interesting about it is the things that I'm dealing with here, here are the same things that are going on in Atlanta, Texas, California, Arizona, Maryland, and all over our country. Mm -hmm. So it it kind of has been a great way to share what's going on. We're not really direct competition. We work together. If I list a house, someone has to bring the buyer. It may not be me. It may be another realtor from another state. So the ability to connect with real estate partners throughout the nation has been quite advantageous for me. That's awesome. And I, I appreciate you for sharing that because I think it is so important that people learn how to strategically work together Absolutely. To, to share ideas. And I remember you sharing a story with me once about you had a house listed like in Claremont or something and leaving Lake Mary to drive all the way to Claremont, even though it's central Florida still, was like two hours away or something. It, di it didn't make sense for you time-wise to go show that one listing, but pull in another realtor, a realtor that you know is going to be uh, a WOMTEC sisterhood, someone that believes in working with integrity and keeping their faith first, their family second, career third, somebody with ethics and, and, and things like that, which is important. So I think that that's something that everybody can learn from you, not just people in the real estate profession, but people in all professions uh, throughout WOMTEC, which is important. Well, one time I was actually on my way out of town for a vacation, which is very rare for me, but I could not find uh, an agent that worked for my company to show a particular property to a buyer and it was my listing. I actually called another WOMTEC realtor in the area and asked if she could go ahead and show the property, which she gladly did. It didn't result in a, in a sale, but it showed her that I trusted her enough to go ahead and take that customer around to that actual property. And that's really how we can work together. Absolutely. Now, if you had, before we move on to the nitty gritty about the housing market and what it's done for the economy in the last few years, um, if you had any advice or suggestion to give to other WOMTEC realtors that may be watching, because I do know Gina Mount's girlfriend, hello, all the way from North Carolina, is with Keller William Realty, and she's on online right watching. Blah, blah, blah. See, Jeannie just choked me up. She's on watching right now. Can you give other realtors a suggestion as to what you would recommend to a realtor that's in WOMTEC that's watching right now, how to make the most of their membership? Connect with other realtors within the chapter, attend your meetings, tell people what's going on in the market, also go ahead and work with other people within your chapter reach out for other partners like your mortgage professionals people that do home inventories your insurance professionals your title companies your attorneys everybody knows somebody that ultimately is going to be able to help them with that property so don't be afraid to reach out to other people let people know what you can do and tell them that referrals are very important and continually ask people to give you referrals and you will get them. Now, I know that everybody knows that, you know, with all the for, for sale signs and the short close signs and the foreclosure signs, and we all know, I, I don't know anything about real estate, but I know that in the last five to eight years, the economy has affected, the real estate market has affected the economy. I don't think people get it to the degree that you were explaining to me earlier. So can you kind of give them an idea as to what does it mean when the housing and home building industry stops? What does it mean when the housing industry suffers? Okay, that's a very good question. Uh, when a house sells, the average, on the average sale, $66,000 goes directly into the local economy. Real estate professionals get money, mortgage people get money, title companies, insurance companies, but also buyers are going out and now making the house their home. So they're going to Home Depot, they're buying paint, they're buying lawn equipment, they're getting their lawns redone, they're buying furniture, they're making that home their own. Maybe they need a fence, maybe they want to add a pool. So $66,000 refreshes the economy for every sale that happens. And then the seller who sold it is possibly buying a new home or buying a boat or a camper and going about their business. So they're putting more money back into the economy from that end. So when the uh, housing industry tanks, so do all the other industries because people are making less money. They can't go out to eat as much. They don't go to the movies as much. And so it has this big spillover effect. When 
jobs get better, the economy gets better, because and people are out buying more houses, which fuels the economy in an upward way. So the downward and upward spiral goes both ways. Absolutely. You know, I, I completely agree. And looking back to the photography industry, you know, I remember there being a distinct time when our clients were like, I'm not worried about a 20 by 24 portrait to hang above my mantle of my family, because I'm worried about whether or not I'm going to have the mantle. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and it did affect even the photography industry. So I think we all need to understand that, you know, when a crisis like this hits our nation it does affect the economy in in a massive way yes. and it's not just about houses foreclosing but the economy there is a light at the end of the tunnel right so there is a light tell at us the what's end happening the now the good news is right now there are a lot less foreclosures and a lot less short sales on the market the average sale now is back to the traditional seller like a real person that you can talk to without having to deal with the lender and all of the hassles that go along with that uh, aspect so that's a good a good sign for us. Nationwide, our sales are up about 24% over the last calendar year. Here in Central Florida, they're up about 22%. Our inventory is at an all-time low, so this is fueling our market. It's uh, a struggle for buyers to actually find the right home because as soon as we list a house, it gets multiple offers pretty quickly. Okay. I know today we're going to focus on, okay, if you were affected by short sale foreclosure, you know, your mortgage is in trouble, how do you recover? But we're also going to focus on what do you do if you're still struggling or if you're just now, maybe it took longer for that cycle to hit you because of what you do and, and you might still be struggling. What advice would you give, first of all, somebody who may see, uh-oh, there's a red flag, I'm using my credit card more than I thought, I, more than I used to, and I'm needing to, I'm going month to month. What suggestions would you give to them if that's the case? Face it head on. Don't get in denial. Don't be ashamed. You're not the only one that has struggled financially in our nation. So reach out to the right professionals to discuss your situation. And every situation is totally different. Uh, if you sit down and you're honest and you lay out your financial picture, and the lender's threatening to, threatening to foreclose on you, maybe we can offer you other suggestions like a deed in lieu or a, a short sale option or maybe bankruptcy is the right venue for, for you. If you're not behind in your mortgage, it might even be refinancing that mortgage. And I know you're going to have a mortgage person here talking about that with you a little bit later. So face it head on. I think that's really important. And you know, we had a conversation once at a restaurant once a long time ago, and I was really torn emotionally because when my when we first started adopting, as you know, we purchased a house for my mom, and um, my father had passed away. Well, we counted on his Social Security to make a lot of that mortgage payment. And I remember chatting with you, and I remember just feeling this agony at the time because how do you tell your mom, I'm sorry, I you have to move out of your house. I, I can't do this anymore. We're giving your home away, the home that she thought she would eventually, you know, pass away in. How do you do that? And I remember you sitting across and, and I think talking to somebody that knows the industry, talking to somebody that can help you think not with your heart and with your brain. And that's exactly what you did because you were like, you're making an emotional decision. This is not a practical decision. And when you spelled it out for me that, you know, you can, you can keep that house for the next 20 years until she, you know, if, if she lives for 20 years more, you know, you can keep that house that long. But you showed me that it would be so hard to even begin to recuperate the investment, recoup the investment based upon what had changed. And I, I think not only facing it head on, but trying to not think emotionally with the decision because we hold on, it's materials. You can't take the stuff with you, you know, and having enough faith that, you know, if you're not supposed to be there, God's got a better plan. And, you know, there's a light at the end of the tunnel and who knows what he might bless you with next. Would you agree with that? I do agree with that. It's very difficult to make a very important financial decision when you're letting the emotions get in the way of that decision. And so many people do that. Uh, when we can pull the emotions out of it and just look at the numbers in black and white and think more logically, we can look at the overall picture and see what's the best solution. And sometimes it's selling, sometimes it's filing bankruptcy and telling the bank, here, it's all yours. It just depends on your situation and you won't know what that is until it's laid out before you. So we look at it and say, well, I think we need to talk to our bankruptcy attorney or we need to talk to a lender or we need to talk to your bank. Uh, many times, maybe the hardship is over and you've struggled through it and maybe someone was unemployed, now they're back to working full time and they can make the current payments, but the obstacle is 
the past payments that they were behind on. Well, we can go to the lender and discuss what's called forbearance, where they work out a solution to make up those past due payments over the life of the loan. And that lets them start from where they are right now without this massive past due amount in, sitting in front of them. Mm -hmm. So there are lots of options out there, but until it's discussed with the right people in the right setting and thought about from a logical perspective of what is in the financial best interest of the family overall, you just don't know. Now, I know we're gonna talk about mortgages with Laura in, in just a moment, but somebody that did give up their home, either mm -hmm. through foreclosure or they sold it or you know whatever they're renting now, um, what steps as a realtor would you advise them if they wanna, you know, how long does it take to, okay, rebuild? Like I have to do this, I have to do this, and I have to do this. What would you tell them as a realtor um, right to get back into a, a home? Right after that, home is sold or bankrupted or whatever their situation was, whatever their solution was, at that point, day one, let's start from putting you with the right lending people to look at your credit report, to figure out how we can help you rebuild your credit and set some goals for three to five years from now so that we can put you on the path of recovery and get you moving again. I short sold a home in 2008 from a young lady who actually came to me from one of our WAMTEC attorneys as a referral and I sold her home and later she referred me to a colleague of hers and I sold his home and that was three years ago, hers was four years ago, they're now buying a home together. So they actually sat with me and we showed them how to rebuild their credit and reestablish and get them on the right path. They did the hard work by doing that and now they're ready to buy again and that's fantastic. So there is a light at the end of the tunnel there no matter where you're at no matter what you're doing um, now I do want to mention a lot of you may be forced with a situation where you have to get out of your home really quickly I know property management is a whole nother segment we'll have to have you back for that for sure um, but what would you recommend somebody that is, is there anything that you would suggest somebody that has to get out of their home quickly and what tell me what's going on with rental properties these days well if you're a seller or an owner and you have a house and you have a great job opportunity out of town and you need to sell this property before you can move and you're upside down in the property or maybe just not enough money to make it worthwhile selling or you can't sell it for whatever reason, one of the things we recommend that you do is turn it into a rental property and then it becomes a business investment for you with a lot of tax advantages for that. So we put you with an accountant and we find the right tenant for you and uh, let you go ahead and move but you're making money and maybe it's going to cover 100% of your debt or almost 100% of that debt and then you can sit on the house until the market actually recovers a little bit more and you can go ahead and sell. So I think the big message here is that we need to find solutions that um, Find somebody that's knowledgeable enough to help you find solutions and don't feel as though you're all by yourself. Don't feel as though you know, you're know you just stuck with this, this burden, this heavy weight on your shoulders because what ends up happening is that that causes depression, that causes stress, and all of just sitting in there not knowing, the not knowing is what is, is more emotional than the, okay, these are my solutions. I've had somebody spell out my options and I, now I can make an educational decision or an educated decision with that information. The fear of the unknown and financial struggles struggles are some of the most challenging struggles that any of us will ever face in our lifetime. If we know what we what our options are and we have a clear path to get there, it makes the whole recovery process a whole lot easier. The worst thing people can do is just deny that there's a problem or be embarrassed because there's a problem. A lot of times we don't want to admit that we're struggling financially mm -hmm. and I encourage people to get over that and to talk to somebody that they know and that has answers because sometimes we talk to family members and they're giving us the wrong advice. I've seen that firsthand and uh, I've referred people to that you, have done that firsthand that, that you know they're not making a decision because they're listening to everybody in their family and it ends up not being the best decision for their family, you know, for their personal family or immediate family, which is which is very important. That's very important. How do you have any advice or other suggestions in regards to this matter that you feel is important to communicate with the audience today? Uh, just keep aware know your options that's very important work with full-time real estate professionals because they are working in the current market today uh, sometimes uh, we have some folks that are uh, not as active in the market today so they don't know all of the options that are available and they don't have necessarily all the right context to put you into the right place mm -hmm. so that the best decisions to make it's not about me as a real estate professional making money there have been many times and you know this mm -hmm. where I have said here's the best option and it's not selling the house so mm -hmm. it's not that I have an economic gain invested in that but it's about looking at you the person and making the best decision for you I always feel that if my customers are uh, 
thinking of themselves and I'm thinking of them and their money first, my money's always going to be fine. So for me, it's not always about getting a sale. It's about making the right decision or making the cus helping the customer lead them to that right decision. I think you're 100%. exactly right. And I've seen that a hundred I've seen that time and time again with you. And mm -hmm. you know, and that creates a loyalty that, you know, I know I can trust you. I know that you would be there for me. I know that you have our family's best interest in mind and it's not just about a, selling a house. Mm -hmm. And I know because Keller Williams people, for example, realtors, we've got Kiki in Texas. Um, we've got well Tanya is a not with Keller Williams, but she's with um, Magnolia, she's a realtor. Mm -hmm. um, Gina Mounts is a realtor. We've got realtors make great Wom tech directors. Joanne Sassone from Boca Raton are all realtors mm -hmm. and but what I've learned and we've had this conversation many times is there is truly a difference between a realtor that is a career realtor and a realtor that's a hobby realtor mm -hmm. and there's a big difference so I do think you need to find someone that's doing it full-time and not just you know showing a house every now and then hoping to make a little bit of extra money for their family um, mm -hmm. every now and then because the, their knowledge and their level of commitment to the client I think is is much much bigger so um, and that's just a personal observation you well, know that I've seen well realtors actually go through more education and training and pay a little extra money to become a realtor as opposed to just a salesperson. Uh, the state of Florida licenses you and then you can take that license and sell real estate or you can become a realtor. In Florida it's uh, about one in three real estate licensees become realtors and it's really important to know the difference between the two. Well that is awesome. I love your dragonfly by the way. I just Thank noticed you. that. That's part of your logo and you've got it the is. pen. It's perfect. And my logo was developed by the great Diane Vivian. Oh our graphic creative, designer. Yes. Creative artistry. Well as we wrap it up I have one more question to ask you um, because I think it's really important for people to know. You know there's lots of things that can affect the housing market. Mm -hmm. There's lots of things that can affect your property but there's also natural disasters mm -hmm. that can affect your property and we're going to talk to Tony in just a little bit who's going to give us some advice on home inventory but what do you know statistically wise about you know sink holes or like we've got hurricane season is starting up what does a homeowner have to take into consideration when it comes to natural disasters like that well sinkholes are prominent all over the world not just here in Florida but we've had our share of sinkholes lately here but even in other states in the US like Texas Pennsylvania New York Illinois and Maryland have all reported uh, sinkholes recently sinkholes are a natural disaster they happen there's nothing you can do to stop them but you can look for the signs of a sinkhole like cracks in a wall that are more serious than just a settlement crack when in doubt talk to somebody about that make sure you have the right sinkhole coverage that's very important in fact if you go to our web page mm -hmm. uh, innovativeregroup.com you can actually look at our sinkhole button and get some information on sinkholes and it's very important for you to know that hurricane season is coming it's a good idea to trim trees and things like that to keep your yard free of debris if you are in the process of a sale whether you're the buyer or the seller a hurricane occurs you're going to need another inspection potentially another appraisal uh, just to assure the lender that the ha house is actually still standing and the right. roof is still secured so keep these things in mind as we move through uh, the season. It also has an effect on your ability to buy insurance coverage. Once we get into a hurricane uh, sy system, uh, we can't. They can't write insurance anymore. So it's important to get that done ahead of time, and a good real estate professional will help you through that as well. That's awesome. Well, thank you, Dee, so much for being here today. I know you're going to give away a couple of prizes, um, which is exciting. So if you are watching live online right now, um, let's say the first. Um, prize we should give away. Tell us what your prize is. Give, I have one. a $25 gift card for Publix. Okay, yay. A $25 gift card from for Publix from D2E. Let's say the first person to Facebook on our WOMTech group page that's watching live right now that is in the state of Florida that can give D a referral of someone who may be interested in being like a first time buyer buying or selling a home um, the first person to Facebook you don't have to put the referrals name on online right now just Facebook I have I have a lead for you D um, you will get a $25 um, gift card to Publix just as a thank you for watching live today and, and being involved so thank you so much D I appreciate it I know you're gonna give away one more prize but I'm gonna hold off on that for okay. just a little bit what's your second prize it's also a $25 gift card but it'll be a Visa card a visa so you can make money watching Wom Tech live so you we're can. also going to give away a $25 visa <laughs> gift card so thank you D thank you um, innovative Realty solutions group for being such a, a wonderful awesome charter member of Wom Tech for supporting our vision and for helping educate our members you can find her on Facebook you can find her on the Wom Tech directory I appreciate you for being here today thank you so much for having me and thank you so much for starting Wom Tech it's a great organization thanks D God bless
Um, as we continue to move forward, a couple of things that I just want to mention to you. I already mentioned the October 4th and 5th conference. I already thanked everybody for participating in the last conference. We have a couple of new features that we're going to be debuting soon. These WOMTech Live segments are going to be archived on our WOMTech website, and we're going to start a new um, feature where you'll be able to sort by um, category. So if you want to learn about health and wellness, you'll be able to click on health and wellness and you'll find all the health and wellness um, videos that we have created for you. If you want to learn about accounting or finances, whatever your trouble may be, we want to provide you with the entrepreneurial education that you need to not only run your business successfully, um, but run your family successfully and, and be as successful as you possibly can be as a person. So I appreciate all of your support. If you have a topic of interest that you feel our members could benefit from hearing about, um, we want to hear from you. It doesn't matter where you're at, we can Skype you in, so that's not a problem. But um, next month, we're going to learn about social media, and we've got a lot of great things that we're going to be talking about with Etsy and um, LinkedIn and, and all sorts of things. So tune in live next month. It's always the first Wednesday of every month, 4 p.m. Eastern time, and we want to we want to connect with you. So we want um, to help share your message to the world and educate the community, which is very important. So now I want to introduce you to another fabulous member that's been, I should have looked it up, but it's been a long time that you've been a member, and we appreciate it. But Laura Myers, the mortgage firm, is here with us today, and she's going to kind of talk to us about, okay, what do you do? Like you've, you've lost your home. How do you get another mortgage in the future? What steps do you take to, to be successful? And just a little bit about the mortgage industry right now and some things that might be important for you to cons consider as you continue moving forward in your future um, with your family. So Laura, thank you so much for being a member. Thank, thank you, you so much for being here today. Thank you for inviting me. My pleasure. Tell everybody who you are and a little bit about what you do and what makes what you do different. Okay. I'm a residential um, mortgage loan consultant, and I've been with the mortgage firm for three years, but I've actually been practicing as a mortgage consultant for 19 years now, wow. which is hard to believe. So I started when I was 10. But <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, I work solely on referral. So um, like Dee had mentioned, I want to do a good job for my clients, even if it may not be doing their mortgage, but advising them to get the right help that they need. Um, so. They refer their friends, their family, and their coworkers to me. So my business is solely based on referral. I don't, um, I get business actually from WOMTech as well, but I don't just advertise to the masses. Okay, so let's talk about this for a little bit because mm -hmm. if we have members that are watching live online right now and maybe they, that, let's take a scenario where someone lost their home, you know, either through foreclosure, either they had to sell it, maybe, maybe it wasn't a short sale, it was just a sale, but they had to get rid of it because they couldn't continue with the payments, or um, they foreclosed, you know, or did a in lieu. What, what steps or advice would you give them to recover and what do they need to know about the mortgage industry today? Well, I think the first step would be to contact a mortgage professional to see where they stand because sometimes things aren't reported properly once they've sold a home. Um, sometimes people don't realize what they've even done if they didn't seek the help of a professional. They don't know the difference between a foreclosure, a deed in lieu of foreclosure. They just know they gave their house back. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to speak to a mortgage professional to see where they stand, if there are things they need to do to reestablish credit, or there's some errors on their credit that need to be corrected, that we can go ahead and address them now so we can get them on the path to purchase a home in the future and to qualify for a mortgage. And give us a, I know every scenario is different, mm -hmm. but on an average, what would be the time frame from, okay, I lost my house in 2008, you know, how many years does it usually take to, to recover and rebuild if they do the things that you tell them to do? If they do the things we tell them to do and they've either short sailed or had a foreclosure, it's three years from that time frame. Okay, so, so it's not that long. I no, mean, it is isn't. A, a, a it short isn't. window if they if they're very proactive about what they want to do and if they can recoup financially. Correct, and actually on a VA loan it can be done in two years, um, but typically it's three. Okay, so somebody that has not, you know, that is just now facing the darkness mm -hmm. of, of their ho of their house and their home industry and, and what's going on, and they aren't sure if they're going to be able to keep it. They think they may need to refinance or lower the payments or mm -hmm. they may need to foreclose. What do you suggest to them? I highly recommend that they give a mortgage professional like me a call and just see where they stand. We can get in touch with a realtor, get a market analysis, get an idea of the value of their home. Um, we can look and see what financing options are available if they wanted to refinance. Um, sometimes there's actually enough equity, especially now that home prices are going up, there's enough equity that we can actually consolidate their bills and pay off their bills and remortgage their home and save them quite a bit of money. Okay, so even if they have a mortgage, and this, this really impressed me about you, even if they have a mortgage with I'm just gonna make say Bank of America mm -hmm. or any of the any of the right. companies that are out there they can call their lender but by calling somebody like you 
you, you may be able to look at it a little bit differently and give them more options. Correct. And, and is that a complimentary consultation that you would it offer is. them? It is. It's a complimentary and a confidential consultation that we provide. So we can look at the big picture. So we're going to look at their finances. We're going to look at their income, their assets, their monthly obligations, the current value of their home, and see what's going to work best for them. Okay. And can you do this for anybody outside of the state of Florida? I'm only licensed in the state of Florida, but I can also refer out to further, you know, WOMTEC members that are in other states and branches. Okay. And if you don't have a mortgage person in your WOMTEC chapter, we need to work with your realtor, because I know there's a realtor in every chapter of WOMTEC. We need to work with your realtor to make sure that we find you one, because I think that that's really important, having mm -hmm. somebody that can say, okay, you know, you got knocked down, but let's let's pick you up. Let's figure exactly. out how to move forward and not let this just continue to, to you know, stress you out. Now, exactly. what are some ways that you can suggest somebody rebuild their credit? Um, some things that they can do that are just simple, take out a credit card. Maybe it has to be a secured credit card to help them rebuild their credit, but they can contact their bank, um, check into getting a secured credit card. It may be a small limit on that account, maybe $500, but just charge groceries or lunch and pay it off each month. The key is they want to keep that balance at 30% or less of the limit of the credit card. And by doing that and reestablishing good credit after all the bad things that have happened, mm -hmm. it'll get them on track to purchase a home in, in the next three years. Okay, that is important. You know, mm -hmm. and something that you said that really shocked me, I just assumed that with the, um, you know what you get for assuming, I just assumed that the credit ratings dropped down, like that the lenders would say, oh, we hit a recession, her credit's dropped a little bit, where like the good score might have been 700 before, and now the good score is considered anybody that's 625 or something like that. I just right. assumed that. But you educated me and told me yes. something a little bit different. Tell us about what is a good credit rating now and compare that to what it was yes. eight years ago. As five far years as ago. lending goes and it, with home loans that now they require or they they think that a 720 credit score is actually a good score. So anything above 720 where five, six years ago it was 620. So they've actually gotten more stringent when it comes to that. But what they've done is they've done research looking at your credit score and they look at that versus the people that have short sale their home that have foreclosed a filed bankruptcy. And they're seeing people that did have higher scores in the 620s to 680s that actually did foreclose or go into bankruptcy. So the risk is higher now. So that's why they've actually increased the score requirements. I guess it's a good thing because yes. you never want to get something that you really can't afford, you know, because they sell you on it. I remember um, just saying to Jeff, once, why do we even have you know 401ks and, and mutual funds and stuff like that? Because mm -hmm. I'm getting more money on my home every time I turn around, That's more than true. I could have ever invested. Well, that was the beginning of the problem, exactly. you know, which which is really important. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you feel is really important for members to know about this industry now mm -hmm. and um, any changes that have happened in this industry this this year? We're still lending money for one, because a lot of people think, oh, you can't get a mortgage anymore. You have to put 20% down, and it's not true. We have programs where you don't have to put down a down payment at all with VA financing, USDA financing. Um, it's a great time for first-time home buyers to purchase their first home because rates are so low. Or families that have grown that need to buy that bigger home, they can contact D, like she mentioned about the property management. Mm -hmm. Maybe if they own a home now, if they can't sell it now, maybe they could look at renting it out, at least having a wash on that payment and go ahead and buy that bigger home that they can afford. Um, so we are still lending. Um, Three, three and a half percent down for FHA and conventional loans, five percent down. Oh, so it's a lot less than mm -hmm. I thought it was. So that's really, less. that's mm -hmm. really good to know. I know it's twenty percent down on a, you know, three hundred thousand dollar property. That could right. be a little daunting. Right, and a <laughs> but, lot of people think that is the minimum down, but it's not true. Okay, what is? Um, tell everybody. A lot, a lot of people might not know or think that automatically assume that they don't qualify for like a VA loan. Mm -hmm. um, what does it take? What are some of the things that they may need to consider that can just perk their interest to get them to contact you? Well, a VA loan is for the veteran and their spouse. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to have served in the military active duty for two years mm -hmm. um, in order to qualify for VA or been in the National Reserve or National Guard for six years. Okay. So that's the requirements to be eligible for a VA loan. And they look at the credit and their debt to income as well, but it's a phenomenal program and no down payments required. And if they um, had some kind of disability when they were discharged from the VA, mm -hmm. chances are they don't have a funding fee either. So it's a really inexpensive way to get into a home. There's no monthly mortgage insurance. So we're seeing a lot more veterans, young veterans, coming home and buying homes and getting VA financing now. That's wonderful. Tell everybody mm -hmm. how they can get a hold of you if they want to connect with you. And um, again, you've, mm -hmm. you've got a complimentary consultation. I know you're yes. on our Facebook page, you're on our WOMTEC directory. Um, how, what is your company website? Well, my personal website is lauramyers.net. It's M-E-Y-E-R-S. 
and they can also give me a call at my office um, if they feel more comfortable doing that too. I have a lot of information on the website, but my phone number at the office again for a, cons a consultation would be 407-889 4321. Okay. Easy number. Perfect, perfect. You know, I want to take a little moment and sidebar because you okay. just made a good comment about marketing. Mm -hmm. um, you had you said my personal website. Yes. And I see members that do this as a faux pas all the time and they don't have a personal mm -hmm. website. Tell us why you have a personal website and why you didn't say my company website. I do. There is a company website mm -hmm. and I am on that, but my personal website I can change and update when I feel it's important to and I can have links to other WOMTEC members or to other people that I feel my clients have, you know, good value to have. I think that that's important because mm -hmm. so many people, so many members work for other organizations and um, let's just, I'm just going to pull Mary Kay out right. of example. If you go to Mary Kay Cosmetics, they've got a powerful website. It's a huge website and you can get lots of information on right. that website, but finding that actual consultant out of a million consultants across the, around the world is, is really challenging and often hard to do. So I always encourage people to have a personal website, even if it's just a one page like business card. So it's just mm -hmm. one page that links to the main. You want to market yourself and then that way as you build your audience if you ever leave this company right. you can take your personal site with you and exactly. people still know how to find you exactly. which is really important and so. I have my own direct phone number too for that's, that reason that's yep. awesome well you're a very smart woman and I'm so thank glad you. to have you on the show today um, thank you so much for being here today I'm sure that the audience gained from your experience and your knowledge so thank I you. appreciate you have Thanks a great so day much. You know, it's so important to, you know, really look at whatever it is that you're going through, what you do and, you know, what you're experiencing and who you are. Take a look at it not as a problem, but take a look at it to surround yourself with smart, intelligent people that can help you find solutions to the problem because you're going through that for a reason. And, you know, I believe that God has a plan for everything that you do. And if you're going through that darkness, if you're going through that tunnel, you know, we need to look at, okay, why? Why are you experience, experiencing this? And where is the, the bright side? Where is the, you know, the sunshine going to come? in from and how, how can I get there so you have a goal you know if you don't know where you're going there is no way to get there and you end up just kind of living life haphazardly and I have found that it's usually not as much fun so how can you take a look at what you're experiencing what's going on in your community what's going on in your life and in your business and, and try and find a way to create a plan to make a difference to make a change to make today count because you're working on what you want to accomplish tomorrow you know planning is important but planning and being prepared for when something happens that wasn't planned is equally important. And the next guest that is here today is gonna to talk to us about how to protect your assets. I think that this is really, really important because you know so many of us, um, hurricane season's coming, so many of us don't have a plan. You may go out and buy water and peanut butter, but do you really have a plan You know, should something happen? You know, Recently in New York with the floods, my cousin um, worked, works in insurance and he went and assessed all the damage of the, of the floods and the stories he has shared with us are, are just amazing at what these people have suffered from. If you don't have a plan, when that emergency hits, when that sinkhole happens, um, you can lose a lot for your family. So please welcome to the set right now, the incredible Tony Zufelt. Thank you so much for being here, oh, Tony. Kathleen. Thank so you. So good to see you. It's so good to see you as always, and you look beautiful as always. Thank you. Tell everybody who you are and what you do. Uh, what I do is home inventory, uh, and that's really who I am. It's an emotional thing that I do. I go in and document everything in people's homes to make sure that they have the plan as part of their plan. They have everything documented through video, photo, listing, as well as through scanning documents. It's to make sure that if something happens, they can move on quicker and with more money. Okay, I think that's important. You know, when we first started talking, I don't have a home inventory. You know, if something happened, I couldn't tell you how many um, pairs of shoes I have, like we'll Dee mentioned earlier. That. Absolutely, we need to. Um, so when I think about that, it's like you don't realize, you can guess, you remember a lot of the expensive things, but you know, what would happen if, if there was a fire? You know, what would happen if there was a sinkhole? What would happen if the hurricane wiped away your house? How prepared would you be? And how much could it, um, how much could it cost you? Which is important. So tell me this story. You told me a story about your husband and what he experienced and um, the lesson he learned, you learned, you know, that they can learn from that experience. Exactly, and I did get permission from my husband. I specifically said, honey, I'm gonna tell something about your not so brilliant move, and he <laughs> said, it's okay, go ahead, it's all right. Uh, what happened was we had a pipe break in the wall in our home, in our home office, and we didn't realize it for a couple of days because we had a floating wood floor but once we stepped on the floor barefooted and realized it was wet, we went, uh-oh, okay. Well, my husband immediately went to his laptop that he had sitting in the living room and found out who, his, who our agent was. 
called him up and said, I'm going to submit a claim, and went onto his computer and he started putting together all the information. In the meantime, I'm trying to move some light stuff out of the office, and I went out to him and I said, honey, I think I need your help. He said, hang on a second, I'm putting in a claim. And I, I stopped for a second and I looked at him very quizzically and he looked back at me and he went, oh. And I said, yeah, honey, that's what I do. Why don't you let me do that? And he said, okay. Uh, so what I did was I called our agent and I said, we're putting in a claim. We had a pipe break. Um, so I'm going to send you some stuff. He said, okay, this is what I need. And I said, no, let me tell you what you're going to get. What you will get is pictures of everything that was in the room, uh, those things that were damaged before and after. You'll get a full listing of everything in the room as well as I will highlight those things that were damaged. You'll get the values of everything that were in there, what we purchased them for, and in some cases the year it was purchased. Uh, there will be a total for you so you know what we're claiming. Um, you will also get uh, the pictures of everything from before and after so there won't be any question. He said, okay, so I guess I can expect that, what, next week? And I said, no, actually, I can get it to you in the next five minutes. There was a slight pause, <laughs> and he said, uh, okay, you got to tell me what it is that you do. And I said, well, I do home inventory for a living. That is my job. That's my business. And he said, okay. I said, I will call you in about five minutes just to confirm you got the, uh, the stuff that I'm going to email it to you in about five minutes. Five minutes later, I sent it to him. Five minutes later, I got a response back from him that said, great pictures, great information, check is on the way. Wow. When I went to my husband and looked at what he was submitting and what I submitted, he had already forgotten about some stuff that was damaged, and it was on my list, and I think we tripled what we would have gotten if he had placed the order. See, I think I, that's why you're here today, because I think that everybody needs to realize this, that it's a minimal investment that can save your family thousands and thousands of dollars if, if, if you don't have it. But I think more importantly, it can help protect you legally and it can help remove a lot of the insurance red tape. You know what I mean? Like if, if it takes Absolutely. the agent to go down there and try and assess the damage and verify the damage, it looks, a, it looks more official if it's coming from a third party source, you know, that isn't going to um, fudge it, you know what I mean? Be exactly. more creative with it. So it, it takes less time for them to investigate. And in a moment of crisis, you need to have access to your funds. Like you need to be able to, you know, get that money back as, as quickly as you can so your family can continue to move on. Well, if you think about it, a lot of people, when they go through the stress of a fire, or a hurricane and everything is blown away and the first thing your insurance agent will ask for is proof that you had those items they will always pay you for the basics they assume that but artwork silver uh, collections all of those things are things that you need to present proof of uh, we've proven it at Wom Tech meetings that people forget what they've got and they continually go back to their insurance agent to resubmit a claim and sometimes it could take six months to a year and even a year and a half to keep remembering things and resubmitting. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that causes issues, it causes problems between the homeowner and the insurance agent. A lot of times a homeowner will assume that the insurance agent is being difficult and he's not. He needs to have proof. Uh, if it takes you that long to get the money and you're still not getting what you should mm -hmm. be getting, why not do an inventory because if you plug in the thumb drive send it to the insurance agent it's done you don't have to think about it you don't have to worry about it and your check comes and you're ready to move on before we started taping today you mentioned something about sending that thumb drive to uh, somebody out of state i would never in a million years have thought about that because i would have just taken it and put it in a security safety deposit box nearby what is your logic on why they should send that a copy of it someplace else in a different state First of all, what we do is when we do the inventory, we give our clients a portfolio and within that portfolio is a thumb drive and that has everything listed from the inventory on it. We keep an additional copy in our safety deposit box as a backup for our customers. But we make a suggestion that they take that thumb drive that they have, make a copy of it and send it to somebody out of state. And the reason that we do that is if the electricity goes out, you can't get into your safety deposit box. They can't open the door so that you can get in. It's much easier to get a hold of somebody out of state and say, you have my thumb drive, could you please send this to so-and-so, and it's done, and no worries. That's, it's you know, over. That, that is such a wise, 
a suggestion because you know think about it where is your safety deposit box probably at your bank where is the bank probably real close to where you live because it's convenient yes. and so what are the chances that they may have problems and damages too you know I think that that's very important now you also mentioned something that kind of shocked me a little bit because it was um, it made me think out of the box like I think most people when they do a home inventory they're you know they're gonna wait until they're established and they have a lot of stuff in their home that's valued it a lot because you know that's what they need to replace but that's actually really backwards thinking like you don't wait until you have stuff that's important that's gonna cost a lot of money exactly you need it more when you don't have stuff because that's like like if you live in a duplex that's when you're more likely to have fire damage from the person that lives next door to you or whatever right. so who who should consider or let's re-educate them mm -hmm. uh, on who should consider getting a home inventory outside of just people worried about a hurricane taking away your home if you have stuff you should get an inventory because if you think about the fact that it doesn't matter how little amount of stuff you have if you don't document it and you don't protect it and cover your assets you're going to have to replace that. That's going to have to come out of your pocket. That means that you're going to have to replace all the shoes and all the clothes, all the dishware, all the pots and pans, all of the little tchotchkes, all of your furniture, all of that. So if you're having to put that money out of your pocket, it's really, really hard. So if you document and then you can submit it to your insurance agent, you don't have to think about it, you don't have to worry about it, and you don't have to get stressed about it either. You know, I think that would be a great gift for um, somebody going off to college, you know, that, that's getting their own apartment off campus or something like that. Because, I mean, college kids would have a tendency of probably making not the wisest decision, <laughs> which means they can, have, they can have a lot more um, chances of having problems with their assets. And if you're, you know, 19 and you're headed off to college and you have your own apartment and you're accumulating furniture and, you're, you know, all your computer stuff and, and all of that if a 19 year old were to lose all of their stuff well a it becomes mom's problem <laughs> right um, but B you know it can become um, it, can, it can really set them back it could set them back so much that they don't continue with college so I think that rethinking who gets it like before you get married you know maybe it's a good idea or after a wedding present after you get married doing that who else might use um, home inventory like when would lawyers use this in, in any Absolutely. situation Absolutely, uh, a great portion of my referrals come from lawyers uh, I've done inventories for divorcing couples when they can't decide who's going to get what. When they split, a lot of times it's easier to do an inventory or to have an inventory done. That way they can take it into their lawyer and they can sit and decide there. And it gets done and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, prenups are really good if you've got two couples that have already established homes but are moving in together. In this day and age, you can never be sure of what's going to happen, mm -hmm. so you want to be prepared. And by being prepared, if she has her stuff documented, he has his stuff documented, there's never a question about if something happens and they split, who brought what into the marriage. Uh, trusteeships, guardianships, they're instructed by the courts to do inventories. So it's an excellent thing, uh, the power of a third party inventory, having a home inventory professional come in and do the inventory means that they don't have to worry about the family coming back to them and saying, you know, well, I know that my mother had this, where is it? Right. They can have the inventory show it to them and say it was never there when the inventory professional did it. Okay. So it takes away the pressure for them. I think that's so important and it's it's so educating. You know, I've, I've met you a hundred times and you've mentioned the name of your company, but never would I have thought of a college kid needing your services or would I have thought of someone getting married or someone thinking about a divorce, you know, <laughs> referring them to you. But that is the best way to protect yourself and, and to protect your assets and, and take make sure that, that you're safe no matter what situation that you go into. Exactly. So Now, before we conclude, I do want to just quickly mention that Tony has been a huge supporter with the WOMTEC Foundation and empowering women and children who have been abused, neglected, and aban ab abandoned through no fault of their own with the courage to dream. And I want to personally just thank you for helping us. We um, just were able to purchase the first 100 t-shirts. So now all we have to do is finish printing the book. That's and so it's cool. our goal this summer to give away the first 100 kits to 100 children aging out of foster care. And I thank you for that, for, for that support. Uh, D2, you you've also welcome. been a supporter of that. I thank you so very much of that. So we're going to continue to make a, di a difference in the lives of children who are struggling you know, through no fault of their own and give them a chance, which is important. So. I love you for that, and that, that's actually the power of WOMTEC.
that really is the power of Womb Tech. Well, together, we're gonna, together, together we're going to do it. We're going to continue to make a difference. So Absolutely. thank you so much for being here today. You're welcome. Um, thank you, Kathleen. My pleasure. My pleasure. God bless you. Now, before we leave, I do want to mention real quick that D2E does have one more gift certificate, gift card to give away, $25 Visa gift card. And I am going to give this card to the first person that finds D2E, or Innovative Solutions Realty Group, on Facebook. And... Um, post a message on her page. So anything, I want you to friend her, send her a friend request, post a message on her page and reach out to D2E. Ready, set, go. You've got a few minutes to get it done. D, let us know who the winner is. I'm super excited to wrap up another edition of WOMTech Live. We've got a great show again coming up to you next month. It will be archived on our WOMTech YouTube channel. So if you have not subscribed as of yet, make sure you do so. And um, make sure that you continue to reach out and spread the word. You know, it's still too many people don't know what WOMTech is and we can't truly make a difference across the nation unless we're working together and it comes from people like you so thank you so much for being here today god bless you and all you do and i wish you only the absolute best i am thinking of you in my sleepless tonight if it's wrong to love you then my heart just won't